requests to open our bibles in our homework for the media zetu in the book of hebrews kwenye kitabu cha waibrania chapter 4 sura ya 4 grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to, uh, to help us in time of need basi na tukikaribia kiti cha neema kwa ujasiri ili tupewe rehema na kupata neema kutusaidia wakati wa mahitaji by the grace of god kwa neema ya mungu in the next few moments that are ahead of us kakizingine chache ambazo zimetutangulia we going to look at a subject that i've titled taliza tutapata mafunzo juu ya kichwa ambao ujumbe nimewita the grace experience ah kupitia neema the grace experience ama mapatano ya neema it is understanding the mystery of the grace of god kuelewa siri ya neema ya mungu in the course of our study katika mafunzo yetu we will be able to see four things that the grace of god can do and enable us in our lives tumeweza kuona mambo manne ambayo neema ya mungu yaweza fanya maishani mwetu and if we get more time na ukipata wakati i will have time to pray for the overflow of the grace of god in our lives nitakuwa na nafasi ya kuomba na ili kuwe na neema ya mungu zaidi katika maisha yetu the overflow of the grace of god in our family na neema ya mungu iwe zaidi katika jamii the overflow of the grace of god at our place of work pia ijaye zaidi katika maeneo yetu ya kazi grace is one of the most important subjects in the entire bible neema ni moja wapo ya kitu muhimu sana katika biblia yote number one, we are saved by grace kwanza tumeokolewa kwa neema and it is through the grace of god na ni kupitia neema ya mungu we are able to obtain the help of god tunapatana na msaada wa mungu it is through the grace of god ni kupitia neema ya mungu we are enabled God in our Christian journey. Tumewezeshwa katika safari yetu ya Ukristo. Again we are going to read in Ephesians chapter 2. Pia tutasoma katika Waefeso sura ya pili verse 8 and verse 9. Mstari wa 8 na mstari wa 9. The Bible says in Ephesians 2:8 and 9. Biblia inasema katika Waefeso 2:8 that it is by the grace kwamba ni kwa neema you have been saved through faith. Umeokolewa kwa njia ya imani. And that not of yourselves. Na kwamba sio kutoka na nafsi zenu it is the gift of god ni kipawa cha mungu not of works sio kwa kama tendo lest anyone should na, boast asije mtu akajisifu in the hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 where we've just read katika waebrania 4:16 ambapo tumesoma the bible makes it clear to all of us biblia inatuwekea wazi sote that god our father kwamba mungu baba yetu is at some place seated ameketi mahali and the bible says eh? Biblia inasema that he seated on a throne kama meketi katika enzi and that throne is christened grace na hiyo enzi imejawa na neema it says he seated on the throne of grace inasema meketi katika enzi ya neema and then we are encouraged alafu pia tuatiwa moyo we are admonished tunahisi we are we are requested tunaombwa that with boldness and confidence kwamba kwa ujasiri na nguvu we approach that throne of grace tukisogea kile kiti cha neema and there is a promise there na kuna ahadi pale that when you approach that throne of grace kwamba ukaribia hapo ile enzi ya neema with confidence na ujasiri you will not get out of that place empty handed utatoka mahali pale bila kitu you will find mercy utapatana na rehema you will receive mercy utapata tana na neema you will receive grace utapokea neema and that mercy and grace na hiyo neema na rehema has a purpose inayo kusudi and the purpose of mercy and grace kusudi ya hii neema na rehema is to help you ni kukusaidia in the time of your need yakati za mahitaji yako when you feel you are lacking unapohisi unakosa when you feel you are wanting uhisipo unahitaji the encouragement we have in the word of god wa moyo tuliko nako katika neno la Mungu is realize that you have a father ni kutambua kwamba unaye baba and the father has an address na baba 
anajulikana and you have a way of getting to where the father is na unanjia kufikia aliko baba and when you get to your father na ufikia hapo kwa baba yako he will intervene in the place of your want ataingilia kati mambo yako this is what gave david confidence hii ndio iliyompa daudi ujasiri when he said aliposema the lord is my shepherd bwana ni mchungaji wangu i shall not want sitakosa kitu and the writer of hebrews na mwandishi wa waebrania when he reflects the words of david alipoangalia maneno ya daudi he says anasema that in the time of your want kwamba nyakati za mahitaji you can yako, get to where your father is waweza kwenda aliko baba yako and he will give you his grace na atakupa neema yake he give you his mercy atakupa rehema zake and your need will be sorted out na hitaji lako litatimizwa and what we get simply from hebrews 4:16 kinachohitajika katika Hebrews 4:16 is that at the throne at the throne of grace of our father kwamba katika enzi ya neema ya baba yetu that is where your personal needs are addressed hapo ndipo mahitaji yako yanashughulikiwa that is where your needs are sorted hapo ndipo mahitaji yako yanashughulikiwa is at the throne at the throne at the throne of grace of our god ni katika enzi ya neema ya Mungu wetu where our needs are supplied hapo mahitaji yetu yanatwaliwa and it is obvious brethren this morning na ni wazi wapendwa asubuhi ya leo that we all have various needs kwamba sote tuna mahitaji mbalimbali and we need the intervention of the hand of god na tunahitaji mwingilio mkono wa Mungu there is a possibility kuna uwezekano that there are those of us in this gathering kwamba wapo baadhi ya wetu wenzetu katika kusanyiko hili we need the help of god kwamba kwa msaada wa Mungu we need the help of god tunahitaji msaada wa Mungu in the area of prayer and fasting katika maeneo ya maombi na kufunga there are those of us here wapo baadhi yetu hapa who need the help of god wanaohitaji msaada wa Mungu in the area of reading and studying scripture katika maeneo ya kulisoma na kuelewa neno i know there are those of us najua kuna baadhi yetu who cannot concentrate even for a moment ambao hawawezi makinika hata kwa dakika when we go to our sacred place in prayer tunapoingia maeneo yetu ya sirini ya maombi and we need the help of god na tunahitaji kusaidiwa na Mungu there are those of us kuna baadhi yetu who need the help of god tunahitaji msaada wa Mungu because we need a new beginning in our lives kwa sababu tunahitaji mwanzo mpya maishani mwetu we need a new beginning in our dreams tunahitaji mwanzo mpya katika ndoto zetu we need a new a new beginning in whatever we have been doing tunahitaji mwanzo mpya kwa yale tumekuwa tukipenda there are those of us here wapo baadhi yetu hapa we need a complete change tunahitaji mabadiliko kamili how things have been up to this point in our lives ya jinsi mambo yamevyokuwa mpaka sasa hivi we don't like the situation in our personal lives hatutaki hali zilizoko katika maisha yetu we don't like what we see in our families hatutaki tunayoyaona katika jamii zetu we don't like what is going on with our children hatupendezi na yanayotendeka kwa wana wetu what our spouses are doing ambao wenzi wetu ndio wanafanya it is not pleasing in our eyes haifurahishi macho yetu and we know it is not pleasing in the eyes of god na tunajua pia haipendezi machoni pa mungu so we need the help of god hiyo tunahitaji msaada wa mungu in this area in our lives katika maeneo haya maishani mwetu there are those of us here brethren wapo baadhi yetu hapa wapendwa we need the help of god tunahitaji kusaidiwa na mungu in the area of our finances katika maeneo ya kifedha we are not where we want to be hauko ulipopaswa kuwa we are not able to meet our daily expenses hatuwezi kushughulikia mahitaji yetu ya kila siku in want sisi tunahitaji and we need the hand of god na tunahitaji mkono wa mungu there are those crucial decisions that you need to make in your life. Kuna hayo maamuzi muhimu unapaswa kufanya maishani mwako. And you need God to direct you. Na unahitaji Mungu akuelekeze. And I know there are those of us here. Na ninajua kuna baadhi yetu hapa. We are in a serious mess. Tuko katika mambo ya umakinifu mwingi. We have messed our lives. Tumeharibu maisha yetu. We are so much deep in de- in debt. Kwa kina tuko katika madeni. And we need the help of God. Na tunahitaji msaada wa Mungu. We need the intervention of God. Tunahitaji Mungu aingilie kati. 
Now those of us are, we don't know after this service where we will go. We are blocked almost every person in our, in, in our, in our phone book. Because we know the next phone call we will receive. It is somebody asking for money that we ask them to help us. And so we need the hand of God. We need the intervention of God. We desperately need God to bring us out of the mess of our lives. Out of the situations of our lives. You know, there are those of us here. You look around you. It is like everything is collapsing. It looks like your business is going down. Your marriage is going down. Your ministry is stagnated. Just about to collapse. And I came here with an assurance. Whatever the size of your problem. Whatever the length of your problem. Whatever the magnitude of your need. God sent me with a message to you. And God told me to tell you. That he is seated on his throne all along. He has been seated, he has always been seated on his throne. All along. His throne of grace. And he sent me to assure you that when you go to his throne of grace, you shall receive an overflow of his grace. And that overflow of the grace of God will be brought about by the presence of God in your life. So the assurance I came with the length of your, of your problem doesn't matter. The depth you've gone in your mess doesn't matter. What matters it is the knowledge that the overflow of grace is available to you. You can receive it. As you ask for the asking. You don't need to know anyone. You don't need a mediator. Take yourself. Take yourself to the throne the throne grace of our God to receive the overflow of your grace and in the place of your need you will obtain mercy you will obtain help that can only come from your father and what does it mean to receive the overflow of grace number one it means when you receive the overflow of grace you will walk in abundance of the blessings of God your life, your life will be full of testimonies your life will be full of breakthroughs and you know what brethren that abundance of blessing that abundance of miracles that abundance of breakthroughs it is not yours by right you don't deserve it it is locating you coming at your pleasure because of the grace of God there is an interesting story in scripture that draws to us this picture so well the overflow of grace brings abundance of blessings testimonies breakthroughs that you never deserved in Matthew chapter 15 verse 21 to verse 28 kindly note this I don't think we are going to read in the interest of time but in the story that we all know 
Sote twaijua. Matthew 15:21 to 28. Matayo 15:21 hadi 28. And in this story, na katika hadithi hii, we see an example. Tunaona mfano of a person who received the overflow of God's grace in her life. Ya mtu aliyepokea neema nyingi maishani mwake ya Mungu. It is the story of the woman. Ni hadithi ya mwanamke who came to Jesus on behalf of her daughter. Aliyemwendea Yesu kwa niaba ya binti yake. And she was not she did not belong to Israel. Na yeye hakuwa Mwisraeli. And when she brought her case before Jesus. Na alipowasilisha hoja yake kwa Yesu. Jesus told her you don't deserve it. Yesu akamwambia hii si yako. You are not an Israel an Israeli. Wewe si Mwebrania. And she answered Jesus. Akamjibu Yesu that even dogs kwamba hata mbwa they eat the crumbs that fall at the table of their masters. Wanakula makombo ya mkate ulioanguka chini ya meza. And what we see in this story na tunachokiona na habari hizi is that this woman ni kwamba huyu mwanamke she was not entitled to that healing. Hakuhitaji msaada ule because she was a complete stranger. Kwa sababu alikuwa mgeni to the common wealth of Israel. Kwa Waibrania she was not a beneficiary. Yeye hakuwa wakufaidika of the covenant of healing. Wa agano ya uponyaji. She wasn't entitled to that healing. Yeye hakuhitaji uponyaji ule. If you read Matthew 15 na ukisoma Mathayo 15 Verse 24 and verse 26. Mstari wa 24 na 26. Jesus made it clear to the lady. Yesu akaweka wazi kwa huyu binti. That she didn't deserve it. Kwamba hakuhitaji. It wasn't her right. Na haikuwa haki yake. She did not deserve or merit it. Hakuhitaji faida hii. But brethren, lakini wapendwa, we see the overflow of God's grace in action. Tunaona neema ya Mungu kwa wingi ikifanya kazi in her life. Katika maisha yake. And she was able to receive had had a breakthrough that she was praying for na kaweza kupatana na upenyo wa neema aliyokuwa naomba and why did she receive it na kwa nini alipokea and she wasn't entitled to it na hakuwa anapaswa apokee it was not ordinary rehaza haikuwa yake kihalali but we see the overflow of grace lakini tunaona mtiririko wa neema kwa mimi in her life juu ya maisha yake and she received what she asked for na kapokea alichokiomba hour of her need wakati wa hitaji lake you want to know why brethren nataka kujua kwa nini wapendwa it is because she prayed the mass at the prayer of mercy ni kwa sababu aliomba ombi la rehema she prayed the prayer of mercy aliomba ombi la rehema to access the overflow of grace na ili apatane na neema teletele you access the overflow of grace unapatana na neema when you pray the prayer of mercy uombapo ombi la rehema and this is the simplest prayer in scripture na hili ndilo ombi rahisi katika maandiko it is the shortest prayer in scripture ni ombi fupi sana katika maandiko that god have mercy kwamba mungu ni rehemu we see in the lives of many people in scripture tunaona maisha ya wengi katika maandiko who sincerely pray the prayer of mercy walioomba ombi la rehema that it is the most comprehensive kwamba ni ombi lililo na hamu it is the most powerful na lina nguvu prayer that you can never pray in your life ombi ambalo huwezi omba maishani you understand the power of the prayer of mercy naelewa nguvu za ombi la rehema when you spend your time utatenga wakati wako praying for the mercy of god upon your life ukiomba rehema za mungu ziwe maishani mwako you pray about many other things haombi juu ya mambo mengine mengi when you get in his throne of mercy na kwamba ufike hapo enzi ya rehema when you get to his throne of grace ufike hapo katika enzi yake ya rehema pray for his mercy uombe rehema zake pray for the mercy of god omba rehema za mungu to work in your life sifanye kazi maishani mwako the first thing the prayer of mercy does ombi la rehema lifanyalo la kwanza is that it will remove the sin barrier ni kwa, in your life ni kwamba itaondoa kizuizi cha dhambi maishani the prayer of mercy ombi la rehema removes the barrier of sin uondoa vizuizi vya dhambi it takes away na linaondoa every barrier kila kizuizi that is created by sin in your life ambacho kimetengenezwa na dhambi maishani you know wako. my brothers and sisters najua ndugu zangu na dada zangu in isaiah 59 katika isaiah 59 verse 1 and verse 2 sari wa kwanza na wa pili god wants us to understand mungu anataka 
tuelewe that when we allow sin in our lives kwamba tunaparuhusu mfambi maishani mwetu becomes a barrier inafanyika kizuizi or an obstacle ama kizuizi to the hand of god from touching you na ile kuzuia mkono wa mungu kuguze sin in your life mfambi maishani mwako will block the hand of god inazuia mkono wa mungu will block the mercy of god itazuia rehema za mungu from reaching you at the time of your need kukuifikia wakati unahitaji so when you pray this prayer kwa hiyo uombapo ombi hili the prayer of mercy ombi la rehema that releases the offer from the grace of god in your life inaachilia neema kwa wingi maishani mwako number one to remove this obstacle of sin kwanza itaondoa kizuizi hiki cha dhambi that is standing between you and god ambacho kimekuwa kikisimama kati yako na mungu and preventing you from receiving the breakthroughs of god na kukuzuia usipate mapenyo ya mungu this is the secret that david learned na hii ndio siri daudi aliyojifunza and you hear him kwamba kumsikia and you'll hear him na unamsikia in psalm 51 verse 1 katika zaburi ya 51 mstari wa kwanza praying for the mercy of god in his life akiomba rehema za mungu maishani you know david confessed najua daudi aliungama that he was able kwamba aliweza to scale over walls kuweza kuondoa viambaza by god's strength kwa nguvu za mungu because of the mercy of god kwa sababu ya rehema za mungu that was active in his life zilizofanya kazi maishani mwake the prayer of mercy ombi la rehema that i helped david zilimsaidia daudi to access the grace of god kupatana na rehema za mungu that gave him the divine strength ambayo limpa nguvu za kitaua he required alizozihitaji scaling all the mountains na ili apandaye milima in his life katika maisha yake and it is my prayer for you this morning na ndio milango asubuhi ya leo that when you pray the prayer of mercy kwamba uombapo ombi la rehema the overflow of god's grace neema ya mungu kwa utere released upon your life itaachiliwa chini ya maisha and yako and nothing na hakuna chochote i said and nothing nasema hamna lolote be able to stand before you litaweza kukuzuia and the breakthrough that you've been praying for kwa upenyo ambao umekuwa ukiombea nothing will stand before you hakuna kitakachosimama mbele zako and the answers that you've been trusting god for in your kwa life jibu ambao umekuwa ukitumainia mungu maishani you shall scale every wall utaondoa kila ukuta you will go through every valley utapitia kila bonde and every season of your life na utapokea maishani mwako in every season of your life katika kila dhambi maishani mwako you will be a recipient utakuwa mpokezi of the overflow of god's mercy wa rehema za mungu kwa wingi as a brethren kwa hiyo wapendwa let us make it a habit wacha iwe ni tabia yetu of us yetu approaching the mercy seat of god ukifikia kiti cha enzi cha rehema praying for the mercy of god na kuziomba rehema za mungu to be activated zitendezwe kazi and released na ziachiliwe upon our lives maishani mwetu when you pray the prayer of god's mercy uombapo ombi la rehema za mungu the sin barrier kizuizi cha dhambi will be removed from your life taondolewa maishani mwako praise the name of jesus jina la bwana lisifiwe hallelujah hallelujah the second thing the prayer of mercy will do jambo la pili ambapo ombi la rehema litafanya it will give you victory takupa ushindi over all your enemies juu ya adui zako when you pray the prayer of mercy uombapo ombi la rehema by approaching the mercy seat of god kwa kukifikia kiti cha rehema za mungu all your enemies adui zako zote those who are in the heavenly places walio kule hewani those who you are walk on other walio kuwa walio duniani and those who are under the other walio chini ya ardhi those who are in the sea walio kule baharini and over the sea na hata juu ya bahari they will not succeed what hawatashinda in standing against you hawatasimama dhidi yako but when you activate the mercy of god upon your life kazi neema za mungu maishani mwako when you activate the mercy of god utendeza po kazi neema za mungu and you receive the overflow of your of the grace of god in your life na upokea neema ya mungu kwa wingi maishani mwako hakuna yote no word hakuna neno that was the spoken against you lililo neno kinyume chako can be able to affect you litaweza kukuthuru it doesn't matter who spoke it haijalishi ni nani alinena it may be your jealous grandmother wewe ikawa ni nyanya yako aliyejawa na wewe your jealous neighbor ama jirani yako aliyewaivu or your business competitor ama mshindi wako wa biashara it could be witches 
Richeza. Tunafukua even yote ile. Our be a, a magicians. Ama wale wa 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 ma magicians. When the when the mercy of God. Wakati neema ya Mungu is activated in your life. Inatendezwa kazi maishani mwako. No weapon. Hakuna silaha that is forged against you. Niliomwa kinyume chako. Can be able to prosper. Itakayoweza kushinda. Because you know what brethren. Kwa sababu unajua nini wapenda. When you pray the prayer of mercy. Uombapo ombi la rehema. You make your the heavenly place of our God unafanya anga ya Mungu to be your place of our God iwe mahali pako pa makazi you will accept the mercy of God na ukipatana na rehema za Mungu all your enemies adui zako wote who remain under your feet wote watakuwa chini ya miguu yako and you know why brethren najua nini wapendwa it is because ni kwa sababu when God looks up on you with mercy Mungu anapokutazama na rehema immediately mara moja your position is changed nafasi yako inabadilishwa and you triumph na unashinda over all situations of your, in your life juu ya hali zote maishani mwako and this is the secret that David discovered na hii ndio siri Daudi aliyoitambua and he prayed this prayer akaliomba hili omi that God may have mercy upon him kwamba e bwana ni rehemu in every situation of Katika his life kila hali ya maisha yake before he went there to battle kabla ya kwenda vitani when he was in battle alipokuwa vitani after winning in battle hata baada kuvishinda vita when he had seen the greatest god na hata alipotenda thambi mbele za mungu he learned the secret alikuwa na hii siri he learned this secret alijifunza hii siri of activating ya kutendeza kazi and releasing na kuachilia the mercy of god upon his life neema ya mungu maishani mwake and whenever he did that na alicho, alipofanya hivyo he triumphed over all situations alipatana na ushindi dhidi ya hali zote because of accessing the mercy of god na popatana na rehema za mungu he was victorious in battle alishinda vitani every enemy that came against him la dui aliyomvamia he was able to put them aside aliweza kuwaweka kando he was able to defeat them aliweza kuwashinda and you know one of his confessions na akupita ya kuunga makwake in Psalms 3 verse 1 katika Zaburi ya 51 mstari wa kwanza David said Saudi anasema that there are many of his enemies kama adui zake ni wengi and they come in thousands na wanakuja wakiwa maelfu and rise against him na wanainuka kinyume na yeye actually in Psalms 3 verse 6 katika Zaburi 3 mstari wa 6 he said that they come in tens of thousands anasema wanakuja wakiwa makumi elfu against him dhidi yake but he triumphs lakini anashinda. Why? Kwa nini? Because of the mercy of God. Kwa sababu ya rehema za Mungu. That was active in his life. Zilizo kunafanya kazi maishani mwake. David had so many people against him. Na Daudi alikuwa na adui wengi. And none was able to defeat him. Na aliweza hakuna aliyeweza kumshinda. Because throughout his life. Kwa sababu maishani mwake yote. He made this simple prayer. Alilifanya hili ombi rahisi. That let your mercy oh God. Kwa sababu cha rehema zako e Mungu. Locate me. Ziweze kunitafuta. Let your mercy oh God. Eh hey, wacha rehema zako Mungu. Find me. Zinipate. Let your mercy oh God. Wacha rehema zako e Mungu. Discover me. Zinitambue. And when the mercy of God located him. Na wakati rehema za Mungu zilimpata. When the mercies of God found him. Rehema za Mungu zilipompata. God shielded him. Mungu alimpa ulinzi. Against every one of his enemies. Dhidi ya adui yote wa mwanzake. And this is my prayer for you my brother and sister. Na niomba milango ndugu na dada yangu. Let the mercy of God locate you. Kwamba wacha rehema za Mungu zikupate. Let the of God find you. Wacha rehema za Mungu zikupate. The mercy of God to engulf you. Rehema za Mungu zikulinde. The mercy of God to insulate you. Rehema za Mungu zikufunike. And you walk triumphantly. Na utashinda over every situation in your life. Dhidi ya hali yoyote maishani mwako. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. And brethren, na wapendwa, for you to be able to enjoy the benefits of the mercy of God. Na ili ufurahie faida ya rehema za Mungu. You must persist in the area of prayer. Lazima usisitize mfuatilize katika maombi. As you pray to God. Uombapo kwa Mungu. To release his overflow of grace. Achilie neema yake kwa wingi. Upon your life. Juu ya maisha yako. Even if when you don't see immediate results. Hata wakati hauoni matokeo mara moja. Do not give up. Usikate tamaa. Keep on praying. Endelea kuomba. Keep on going back to the front uh, to the front of mercy. Zidi kwenda kwenda katika enzi ya neema. Like the lady Jesus talked about. 
about us. Every day, she will go before an evil judge and to pray that he may intervene in her situation. She never gave up. She never gave up. She, every day of her life, she would rise up. Go before the judge and request the judge to intervene. The judge declines her. He she wakes up the following day. Goes before the same judge. Blesses her same prayer before him. The same answer in the negative. She goes back tomorrow. Same prayer. Same results. Until the judge was tired. And when Jesus was giving that a parable, he was not saying that our God is like the evil judge. But he was giving us that parable to teach us the importance of persistence in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you pray the prayer of mercy and you activate the mercies of God in your life, you receive the overflow of God's grace. You receive the overflow of God's blessings and you live a life that is full of testimonies, a life that is full of breakthroughs. And these are not testimonies and breakthroughs that you deserved. Na hisi sio shuhuda ama mapenyo uliyohitaji or you are qualified for. Ama umehitimu kuzipata. But you receive them because of the grace of God. Bali umezipokea kwa ajili ya neema tu ya Mungu. When this woman asked for Jesus to have mercy upon her. Huyu mwanamke alipoomba kwamba Yesu amhurumie, Jesus did not answer her prayer immediately. Yesu hakujibu ombi lake mara moja. But we see a lady who was persistent. Lakini tunamwona mwanadada aliyefuatilia who was ready to argue her case aliyekuwa tayari kuweza kutetea kesi yake need was better mpaka hitaji lake likashughulikiwa and when the mercy of god was released upon her life na wakati neema za mungu ziliachiliwa maishani mwake she saw the breakthrough that she was waiting for alipatana na upenyo aliyokuwa na ugoja do you remember the blind batmaya nakumbuka batimayo kipofu when he called out on jesus alipoliitia jina la yesu and he prayed oh jesus son of david akapaza sauti Yes, mwana wa Daudi. Have mercy upon me. Ni rehemu. There were people there were people who were around Zabat Myers. Kuna watu walikuwa wamezunguruka Batimayo. And they were telling Bat Myers. Walikuwa wanamwambia Batimayo. Hey, you are embarrassing us. Wewe nyamazo unatuaibisha. Don't you see the savior is on a hurry? Uoni muokozi huko katika haraka. He's going to do more important business. Anaenda kufanya mashughuli muhimu. But we see the spirit of Bat Myers. Lakini tunaona roho ya Batimayo. So he was blind physically. Japo kwa alikuwa kipofu kwa macho. He persisted in his prayer. Alisisitiza kuomba and the persistence of his prayer yielded major breakthrough in his life ipatana na upenyo wa maishani mwake you see that in Matthew 15:23 hayo tunaiona katika Mathayo 15:23 in Mark 10:48 na Marko 10:48 when you pray the mercy prayer uombapo ombi la rehema and the mercies of god and the grace of god is activated na rehema na neema za Mungu zinatendezwa kazi it doesn't matter how many people are around you haijalishi wangapi wamekuzunguka The prayer of mercy will single you out for the miracle that you deserve. For the miracle that you are praying. May the mercies of God single you out to receive that which you believe in God for. There were many people. There was a great crowd. And they had their people who had more issues. Na kulikuwa na watu walikuwa na mahitaji mengi their problems walikuwa na shida zao when jesus was leaving jericho yesu alipokuwa anatoka yeriko but it is only one man lakini ni mtu mmoja pekee amongst the crowd kati ya ule umati who received their miracle aliyepokea muujiza wake and what was the secret na siri ilikuwa ipi the man was persistent mtu alisisitiza and he knew what to pray. 
pray. Na alijua jinsi ya kuomba. The man was persistent. Huyu mtu alihimiza. And he knew what to ask. Na alijua cha kukiomba. The man was persistent. Huyu mtu alifuatiliza. He knew who to pray. Na alijua atamuomba nani. There were other great men in that community. Kulikuwa na wakuu wengine katika ile jumuiya. But he knew. Lakini alijua. It is only Jesus. Ni Yesu pekee. Who can release mercy. Awezaye chilia rehema. It is only Jesus. Ni Yesu tu. Who can release grace. Naweza chilia neema. And when he prayed. Na alipomba. Son of David. Mwana wa Daudi. Have mercy upon me. Ni rehemu. The mercy of God. Rehema za Mungu. Located but my eyes. Zilipatana na batimayo. Because the man was persistent. Maana yule mtu alifuatiliza. Because he knew what to pray. Kwa sababu alielewa cha kukioma. He knew who to pray. Na alijua atamuomba nani? Brethren. Wapendwa. It is important to understand. Ni muhimu kuelewa that always in our community. Kwamba kila wakati katika jumuiya yetu. There are many people. Wapo watu wengi. In our gatherings. Katika makusanyiko yetu. So many who are calling on God. Kuna wengi wanaomuita Mungu. That is my prayer for you today. Na niombi langu kwako leo. God will hear your voice. Kwamba Mungu ataisikia sauti yako. Even among the millions. Na katikati ya mamilioni. Who are calling out to him. Wanaolitia jina lake. And it is my prayer. Na niombi langu. That God will release his mercy upon your life. Mungu ataachilia rehema zake maishani mwako. The floor of his grace. Na kuwe na neema kwa wingi. To locate you. Ipatane na wewe. To find you. Kukutafuta. For your breakthrough. Kwa upenyo wako. And for your victory. Na kwa ushindi wako. When you pray for the mercy of God. Uomba pa rehema za Mungu. At the mercy seat of our God. Katika kiti cha rehema cha Mungu. God will give you. Mungu atakupa. A divine solution. Ma suluhisho la kitaua. For all your problems. Kwa mashida shida zako zote. You cannot persist in the presence of God. Uwezi sisitiza katika uwepo wa Mungu. You cannot persist at the throne of mercy of our God. Uwezi ukafuatiliza katika enzi ya neema ya Mungu. And you remain the same. Ubakie kawaida tena. At the throne of mercy of our God. Na neema ya enzi ya Mungu wetu. His grace and mercy is received. Neema na rehema zake zinapokewa pale. And you receive divine solutions. Na upokea hapo suluhisho la kitaua. Oh, you are problems. Kwa shida zako zote. The woman yule mwanamke had a problem. Alikuwa na shida. Her daughter, her daughter was suffering terribly. Binti alikuwa anateseka mno. She was under demonic spell. Alikuwa amepagawa na mapepo. We see blind but my eyes. Tunamuona batimayo kipofu. He was suffering. Alikuwa anateseka. He was physically blind. Alikuwa kipofu hakuona. But the day God released his mercy upon their lives. Lakini ni mpaka Mungu aliachilia neema yake maishani mwao. Their problems. Shida zao became a thing of the past. Sikawa mambo ya kale. If you want to experience God's overflow of grace. Ikiwa unataka kupatana na rehema kwa utele za Mungu. For the mercy of God. Omba upatane na rehema za Mungu. Active upon your life. Zitendezwe kazi maishani mwako. It is the mercy of God. Ni rehema za Mungu that opens up. Zinazofungua the rivers of the grace of God. Ama bahari ya neema ya Mungu. It is the mercies of God. Ni rehema za Mungu that opens up. Zifunguazo the rivers of the grace of God. Bahari za rehema ya Mungu. May the overflow of the grace of God. Naomba rehema za kwa wingi za Mungu. Cause the abundance of blessings. Zilete utele wa baraka. May you have a life of testimonies. Naomba uwe na maisha yaliyoja na ushuhuda. May your life be full of breakthroughs. Naomba maisha yako yajawe na upenyo. May you receive all divine solutions. Upokee masuluhisho yote ya kitaua. That only the mercy of God can release. Ambazo ni rehema za Mungu tu zaweza peana. There is a second thing. Na la pili that the overflow of the grace of God does. Ambapo neema kwa wingi ya Mungu inafanyapo it gives you victory. Inakupa ushindi over sin. Dhidi ya dhambi. The overflow of the grace of God. Neema kwa wingi ya Mungu. It will give you victory. Itakupa ushindi over sin. Juu ya dhambi. Bible says in Titus. Biblia inasema katika Tito chapter 2 verse 11 and verse 12. Sura ya pili mstari wa 11 na 12. That for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Kwamba neema ya Mungu iyo kwayo wanadamu wote teaching us that denying 
ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly tupate kuishi kwa kiasi righteously na haki and godly in the present age na utaua katika ulimwengu huu sasa you know brethren najua wapendwa the overflow of the grace of god mtiririko wa neema ya mungu is not a license si kibali neither is it an encouragement wala si jambo la kutia moyo to continue living in sin uendelee kuishi dhambini some people think kama vile wengine wanavyofikiria on the contrary kinyume chake grace is what will enable you neema ndio itakayokuwezesha to walk over victory tembee kwa ushindi over sin dhidi ya dhambi when you understand the grace of god wele wapo neema ya mungu this will be your thinking hii itakuwa kufikiria kwako that because god is so loving and merciful to me kwamba kwa sababu mungu amejawa na upendo na ananipenda sana i cannot continue in the life of sin siwezi endelea na maisha ya dhambi i cannot continue to hurt and offend siwezi endelea kumkasirisha the one who loves me ananipenda so much in spite of who i am and what i have done zaidi fikinywa licha ninayoyatenda na nilivyo that would be your thinking hayo atakuwa mawazo yako when you properly understand the grace of god ulele wapo vizuri neema ya mungu you will desire utatamani to live a life kuishi maisha that pleases the one who loves you ya mpendezayo anayekupenda in spite of who you are and what you've done licha ya wewe ni nani na umetenda nini but when you don't understand grace lakini wakati huelewi neema you will be thinking utakukifikiria that because god is so loving and merciful sababu kwamba Mungu ananipenda na rehema and because surely he is so forgiving na ni kwa sababu kwamba hakika naye ni akusamehe it doesn't really matter how i live hajalishi mimi nitaishi vipi i can sin naweza fanya dhambi i can lie naweza danganya and then after that afu baada ya hayo ask him for forgiveness ni muombe anisamehe and because he is gracious na kwa sababu ni wa neema he will forgive me hakika atanisamehe brethren that is a misunderstanding of grace wapendwa huko niko kutuelewa neema not understanding the concept of god's grace niko tokuelewa maana ya rehema za mungu and Paul realizing that paulo baada kutambua hayo he addresses this issue anaelezea hali hii in romans chapter 6 verse 1 katika warumi 6 mstari wa 1 where he said anaposema hivi shall we continue in sin kwamba sasa tuendelee dhambini so grace may abound kwa sababu tumewe tumepewa neema he says God forbid. Nasema Mungu asiruhusu. Understanding a grace kuelewa neema it will cause you itakufanya to live a deliberate life. Wishi maisha uliyoamua that avoids the life of sin. Kwamba nitaachana na maisha ya thabi. Life that is committed. Maisha ya kujitoa to pleasing God. Kumpendeza Mungu. When we understand grace uelewa po neema like Paul understood it. Jinsi Paulo alivyoelewa and like it is explained na vile inavyoelezewa in the book of Deuteronomy. Katika kitabu cha kumbukumbu la Torati which I want us to read together ambacho nataka tusome pamoja chapter 7 Deuteronomy sura ya 7 kumbukumbu la Torati verse 7 and verse 8 wa 7 and 8 and again in chapter 9 na pia katika sura ya 9 verse 5 and verse 6 wa 5 pia 6 Deuteronomy 7 kumbukumbu la Torati 7 verse 7 and verse 8 wa 7 and 8 the bible says bibili inasema the lord did not set his love on you or chose you kwamba Bwana hakuwapenda ninyi wala hakuwachagua ninyi because you are more in number than any other people eti kwa sababu ninyi mlikuwa wengi kuliko mataifa yote for you were the least of all people ama mlikuwa wachache kuliko watu wote but because the lord loves you lakini kwa sababu Bwana anawapenda and because he would keep the oath which is so to your fathers na ni kwa sababu alitaka kutimiza uwapo wake aliwapia baba zenu the lord has brought you out with a mighty hand ndio sababu bwana akawatoa kwa mkono wa nguvu and redeemed you from the house of bondage na akawakomboa katika nyumba ya utumwa from the hand of fellow katika mkono wa farao king of egypt mfalme wa misri and god wanted israel to understand grace mungu alitaka israeli waelewe neema they did not deserve to be chosen hawakuhitaji kuchaguliwa they were not the most powerful hawakuwa wenye nguvu kuliko wengine they were not the most experienced hawakuwa na ujuzi 
kuliko wengine. But because they found grace in the sight of God. Lakini kwa sababu walipatana na rehema za Mungu. God chose them. Mungu akawachagua. And in chapter 9. Na katika sura ya 9. Verse 5 and verse 6. Msari wa 5 na msari wa 6. God tells them. Mungu anawaambia. It is not because of your righteousness. Kwamba si kwa haki yenu. It is not because of your uprightness. Wala unyofu wa mioyo yenu. That I uh, that I'm giving you to possess your land. Kwamba mnaingia kumiliki nchi yao. You need to understand Israel. Na paswa kuelewa enyi Israeli. That God is not giving you this good land to possess. Kwamba Mungu hawapi nchi hii nzuri muimiliki. Because you are righteous. Kwa sababu nyinyi ni wenye haki. Oh you are a thief naked people. Lakini nyinyi ni watu wenye shingo ngumu. We need to understand. Na paswa kuelewa that our calling. Kwamba mwito wetu. We need to understand. Na paswa kuelewa that the grace that we receive from God. Kwamba neema tuliyopokea kutoka kwa Mungu. It's not because we are so good. Si kwa sababu sisi ni wazuri sana. Not because we are righteous. Wala sisi tu wa haki. Oh better than our peers. Ama sisi ni wazuri kuliko wengine. Oh the best in our families. Ama sisi ndio bora katika jamii zetu. The point that God wants us to make up. Mbalo Mungu anataka kufanya hapa. You are blessed. Ni kwamba umebarikiwa. Because God chose to bless you. Kwa sababu Mungu aliamua kukubariki. You walk in breakthrough. Wewe You walk in breakthrough unatembea katika upenyo because God wanted you to walk in breakthrough kwa sababu Mungu alitaka utembee katika upenyo your contribution is zero matoleo yako hapa ama mchango wako ni bure nothing you've done to deserve haujafanya lolote na ili ustahili hii it is the love and the mercy of God ni upendo na rehema za Mungu and that is understanding na hiyo kuelewa of the grace of God ya neema ama rehema za Mungu should draw us into a deeper relationship relationship with our God. Na paswa kutufanya tuwe karibu na kina katika mambo ya Mungu. It should cause us brethren. Na paswa kutufanya to love our God. Tumpende Mungu wetu. And remain committed to our God. Na tuzidi kujitoa kwake. In a better way than we have ever done. Bora zaidi zaidi ya jinsi tushawazifanya. Paul understood the concept of the grace of God. Baada Paulo kuelewa maana na hali ya neema ya Mungu. And understanding that grace causes you to triumph of sin. Na kuelewa kwamba neema inakufanya ushinde dhambi. He urges us. Anatuomba. In Romans 12:1. Katika Warumi 12 mstari wa kwanza. That I beseech you my brethren. Kwamba ninawaomba enyi wapendwa. By the mercies of our God. Kwa rehema za Mungu. That you present your bodies. Kwamba muitoe miili yenu. As a living sacrifice. Iwe dhabihu iliyo hai. Holy. Kwa utakatifu. Acceptable to God. Ikubaliki kwa Mungu. And that is the only service you can give God. Na hiyo ndio tu huduma unayoweza mpa Mungu. That is how you appreciate the great the gift of grace. Hivyo ndivyo unavyoshukuru kipawa cha rehema za Mungu. That is how you appreciate the the, the gift of the mercies. Hivyo ndivyo unavyoshukuru kipawa ulichopewa cha rehema ya Mungu. your body. Kwamba kutoa miili yenu. As a living sacrifice. Kama dhabihu iliyo hai. In the presence of God. Katika uwepo wa Mungu. That is what God is asking. Hayo ndio Mungu anayoomba. In exchange of his grace. Kubadilishana na rehema zake. In exchange of his mercy. Kubadilishana na neema yake. It is nothing but the pure grace of God. Sio lingine bali ni neema kamili ya Mungu. That keeps us alive. Inayotupa uzima. It is not our righteousness. Sio uhaki wetu. It is not our security men. Sio usalama wa walinzi wetu. It is not our security gadgets. Sio katika usalama wa vifaa vyetu. It is not our money. Sio pesa zetu otherwise ala la sivyo if it was money ingekuwa ni pesa we would not be burying millionaires and billionaires hatungekuwa tunawazika mabilionea na mamilionea we understand the grace of god tunapoelewa rehema za mungu we will be able to retell our god tutaweza kumwamia mungu wetu that my father kwamba baba yetu i offer my life natoa maisha yangu i offer my body na utoa mwili wangu as a living sacrifice kama dhabihu iliyo hai that is holy and acceptable to you ndio takatifu na kubalika kwako my father baba yangu you've been so kind to me umekuwa mwema sana kwangu you've been so merciful to me umekuwa rehema nyingi kwangu you've been so gracious to me umekuwa wa neema kwangu i want to live a life nataka niishi maisha that pleases you yanayokupendeza i want to live a life nataka niishi maisha that bring glory to your own holy name nataka letea jina lako utakatifu utukufu the proper understanding of the grace of god huko ndiko 
the proper understanding of the mercy of God that you deliberately resolve in your heart you will do all that is within your power to offer your life to God as a living sacrifice but when you don't understand the grace of God you will keep following your own desires and pleasing your own desires but brethren when we understand the grace it is our divine helper that is made readily available to help us over our, our, to help us go through all tempting situations it is grace that will help you it is grace that is available to us and it will help us to escape every tempting situation grace my brethren it is our divine root of overcoming sinner grace my brethren it is our divine helper of triumphing over any tempting situations my brothers and sisters when we understand the concept of grace we will walk in confidence we will walk fearless knowing that any time we are tempted God will offer a way of our escaper like Paul and I told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 that our God is faithful he will not allow we be tempted beyond what we can bear in every tempting situation God will bring a divine solution a divine escaper so that you may be able to overcome it. You may be able to bear it. Brethren, I came to let us know that where there is grace, there is always divine help to overcome sin. You know, the pro our problem is that many times we ignore God's helping hand. We want to clutch on straws. We want to get our own solutions. We want to find our own ways of escape. But God sent me to tell you God sent me to tell you that in your tempting situation he has your divine root of escape. And you can overcome it when you tap on his grace. When you get hold of the grace of God. There's a third thing that the overflow of grace does in our lives. And that is brethren. The overflow of grace will help you to receive total redemption from the curse of the law. Total redemption from the curse of the law. And Paul explains this one to us clearly in Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 to verse 14. And allow us not to read, you can note it down. Galatians chapter 3 10 to 14. Redemption from the curse of the law. We know that God gave the law to Moses. Moses. And we see it clearly in the Ten Commandments and in the five books of the Bible where we are told thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, 
Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's possessions. Thou shalt honor your father and your mother. And so on and so forth. The Lord tells us everything God requires from us. Everything that God commands us to do. And under the Old Testament times. If you failed to observe the law. You, you obtained a curse. The consequences of disobedience were a curse. And Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 tells us that anyone who did not observe the law immediately they came under a curse. And to make it worse, brethren, James in chapter 2 verse 10 he says uh, that if you broke one of the laws, you are guilty of breaking all of the laws. You break one, you get the punishment of breaking all that was in the law. It is important to understand that the law in itself it was not a curse. The curse came as a result of disobeying the law. A failure to keep the law. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 onwards there is enumerated kuna kuna there is uh, enumerated for us the results of the curse of disobedience. If you disobeyed the law, you inherited poverty. You will inherit barrenness. You inherit stagnation. Financial ruin. Lack of peace. Madness. And other mental problems. Diseases of every kind. Diseases of every kind. Came upon every person. Who failed to observe the law. The problem that was before Christ. Was that there was no one. Who had the ability to fulfill all the requirements of the Lord? And I believe that is why Paul says in Romans 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and fallen on the short, and fallen short of the glory of God. And again, when Jesus came, he said, he said in Matthew 5 verse 17 that he did not come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. You know, when Jesus came, he did not come to say that the law did not matter anymore. He did not come to tell us that there is no need to honor your parents. That now you can worship other gods. You can live in immorality. You can covet other people's properties. That is not what Christ came to do. He did not come to say that we can live a lawless life. That we can do whatever we like. Jesus came to introduce to us two important things. And thing number one it is the grace the grace which is divine assistance our divine strength to enable us to live our Christian life and the second thing he brought to us is the power of the Holy Spirit before Jesus shed his blood on the cross he 
Adam yake msalabani which was meant for our redemption ambao maana yake ilikuwa itukomboe we were under those curses tulikuwa chini ya ile laana under the curse of poverty chini ya laana ya umaskini under the curse of barrenness chini ya laana ya utasa under the curse of stagnation chini ya laana ya kuelelea under the curse of mental problems chini ya laana ya shida za kiakili but through his death on the cross ile kupitia kifo chake msalabani he destroyed aliharibu any one of those curses yote haya laana that was hanging over our head iliyokuwa inaelea juu yetu because of our disobedience kwa sababu ya kutoti kwetu or the disobedience of our four parents ama kutoti kwa wazazi wetu important to understand ni muhimu kuelewa that if we are not careful kwamba tusipokuwa waangalifu we can inherit the curses of our generations waweza rithi laana za vizazi vyetu but by the grace of god lakini kwa rehema za mungu you are no longer under any curse haupo chini ya laana yoyote by the grace of god kwa rehema za mungu you are no longer under any spell haupo chini ya laana yoyote any curse that was over your head laana yoyote iliyokuwa juu yako it is broken ilivunjwa by the reason of the grace of god kwa sababu tu ya rehema za mungu therefore brethren kwa hiyo wapendwa in your life maishani mwako poverty has no strength umaskini hauna nguvu in your life maishani mwako barrenness has no strength utasa hauna maana in your life maishani mwako you are a hair of productivity wewe ni mrithi wa mali you are a hair of progress wewe ni mrithi wa mambo ya kusema you are a hair of victory wewe ni mrithi wa ushindi because your heritage is the grace of god kwa sababu urithi wako ni rehema za mungu jesus did not only break the curses yesu hakuvunja laana tu he also placed you and i pia alikuweka wewe na mimi in a position katika nafasi where we can access ambapo tuwaweza penyeza the riches of divinity na kupatana na mali ya kitaua in every area of our life katika kila maeneo ya maisha yetu and that is where grace comes in hapo ndipo rehema inakujia we deserve the punishment tulihitaji kuadhibiwa we deserve to be we laboring under uh, under the law tulipaswa kufanya kazi ngumu chini ya sheria because we were disobedient kwa sababu hatukuwa watiifu but now because of the blood of jesus lakini sasa kwa sababu ya damu ya yesu that has released the grace of god upon our lives ndio atilia rehema za mungu maishani mwetu we are set free tumewekwa huru no curse hamna laana that can operate upon your life yako no limiting power hakuna vizuizi viz- viz- that can operate on your life siwezavyo kufanya kazi maishani mwako because you've been redeemed kwa sababu ushakombolewa from the curses of this life kutokana na laana za kimaisha from the curses of your generations kutokana na laana za kizazi chako from the curses of your parents kutokana na laana za wazazi wako from the curses of your grandparents kutokana na laana za wazazi wako you are kale. set free umewekwa huru you are set loose under the grace of God. Chini wa chini ya rehema za Mungu. And what do deserve my brother and sister? Na unachohitaji sasa ndugu na dada. The blessings of God. Ni baraka za Mungu. The grace of God. Rehema za Mungu. Which is God's unmerited favor. Ambacho ni kibali cha Mungu usichokihitaji. A favor that you never worked for. Na kama kibali usichokifanyia kazi. A favor which or where your contribution is zero. Kibali ambacho hujakifanyia kazi yoyote. Number 4. La 4 the overflow of the grace of god in your life neema teletele ya mungu juu ya maisha yako it will give you divine strength itakupa nguvu za kitaua to keep on standing kuendelea kusimama no matter what haijalishi hali ziko vipi the overflow of the grace of god neema teletele ya, uh, ya mungu will give you divine strength takupa nguvu za kiungu to stand kusimama no matter what haijalishi hali ziko vipi in daniel chapter 3 katika Danieli sura ya 3 17 and 18 17 na 18 Bible says Biblia inasema Daniel 3:17 and 18 Danieli 3:17 18 A story that we are all familiar with Hadithi ambazo yote asote tunaielewa If that is the case then Basi kama ni hivyo our God Mungu wetu whom we serve tunayemtumikia is able to deliver us from the burning fire 
furnish. Anaweza kutuokoa na tanuru ile iwakayo moto. And he will deliver us from your hand O king. Na tatukomboa kutoka kwa mikono yako e mfalme. But if not so. Lakini kama si hivyo. We want to make it so clear to you Mr. King. Na iwe wazi kwako ewe mfalme. That we do not serve your gods. Kwamba hatutaitumikia miungu yako. We are not going to worship your golden image. Hatutainamia sanamu yako ya dhahabu which you have set up. Ula ambayo umesimamisha. Brethren that is what grace does. Wapendwa hivyo ndivyo neema inavyofanya. It will give you strength to stand. Itakupa nguvu ya kusimama. No matter the forces and the powers against you. Haijalishi ni nguvu kiasi gani zinakusukuma. No matter what is pushing you down. Haijalishi ni nini kinachokukumilia chini. The overflow of the grace of God. Neema iliyo nyingi ya Mungu will give you the power and the ability to withstand. Itakupa nguvu na uwezo wa kustahimili. We are seeing the man manifestation of this grace in the life of De- Daniel. Tunaona udhihirisho wa neema hii katika maisha ya Danieli. The devil is doing all that he can. Shetani anafanya yote awezayo to make Daniel compromise. Kufanya Daudi akaalegeze msimamo. Daniel to compromise. Danieli alegeze msimamo and to uh, give up on God. Na akate tamaa na Mungu. What the devil didn't know. Shetani asichokijua is that the grace of God was active in the life of Daniel. Ni kwamba neema ya Mungu ilikuwa inafanya kazi and therefore there was no way the devil was going to succeed. With the first thing the devil had tried with the life of Daniel. La kwanza ambalo shetani alikuwa amefanya na maisha ya Daniel is carrying him in captivity. Yeye anampeleka katika nchi ya uhamisho. To be taken as an exile in Babylon. Kama mateka kule Babylon. And the mission of the devil in the life of da- uh, in the life of Daniel. Na kazi ya shetani katika maisha ya Daniel was to make Daniel's life miserable. Ni kuhakikisha maisha ya Daniel imesambara and to place him in a, uh, and to put him in a place of stagnation na kumweka katika mahali asipoendelea but when the grace of god is active in your life my brethren lakini wakati neema ya mungu inafanya kazi maishani mwako tendwa like we see it did in the life of daniel kama tunavyoona ilivyofanya kazi maishani ya daniel where he was sent to stagnate alikotumwa asimame mahali pale we see the grace of god locating him tunaona neema ya mungu ikimtafuta and he is receiving promotions na anapokea tu kupanda He finds himself sitting with the advisors of the king. The mission of the devil was to sac- stagnate his life. Kazi ya shetani ilikuwa kusimamisha maisha ya Daniel. But the grace of God. Lakini kwa rehema za Mungu. Bringing elevation in the life of Daniel. Naleta kupandishwa cheo maishani mwa Daniel. I am praying for your life my brethren. Na ndio maisha yako mpendwa. That any attempt from the devil. Kwamba kila jaribio kutoka kwa shetani. To hold you down in captivity. Kukushikilia chini katika utekaji. With only result. Matokeo pekee. With the grace of God locating you. Ni neema ya Mungu iki kutafuta and causing your life to receive divine appointment na kufanya maisha yako ipokee kuinuliwa kwa kitaua and divine lifting na hata kuinuliwa juu kiungo what the devil meant for your worst na yale yote shetani amekupangia mabaya god of eternity mungu apindue that whatever god the devil intended to achieve with the situation that is bringing in your life na lolote shetani alilonuia kufanya na maisha yako kukuangusha may god use it as your ladder naomba Mungu aitumie kama ngazi yako to access divine appointment kupatana na mapatano ya Mungu akiwa na kukuinua divine elevation kuinuliwa kwa kiungu and divine promotions hata kupandishwa cheo kwa kiungu when because Daniel continued praying for the mercy of God na kwa maana Daudi aliendelea kuomba asaidiwe na Mungu we see the king issuing a decree tunaona mfalme akitoa tangazo that everyone should pray the image of the king kwamba kila mtu aina mie ile sanamu ya mfalme and now da- the devil was after daniel's life na kwa sababu shetani alikuwa anafuatana na maisha ya da- he has thrown it to a den of lions anarushwa katika tundu la simba and what we see the grace of god doing na tunaona vile neema ya mungu inafanya in the den of lions katika tundu la simba the overflow of the grace of god ile neema kwa wingi ya mungu shuts the lion's mouth inafiata midomo ya simba and they did not harm him na hawakumthuru what the devil when the devil intended harm wakati shetani alinuia maovu then 
Daniel receives that testimony. Daniel alipatana na ushuhuda. Because he trusted in the grace of God. Sababu alitumainia rehema za Mungu. It is those who are plotting for the demise of Daniel. Na wale walioletwa wamwangamize Daniel. They are the ones who inherited that demise. Wale waliorithi yale mauti. They became victims. Wakawa manusu of their evil plans. Wa mipango yao miovu. And so brethren this morning. Kwa hiyo wapendwa asubuhi ya leo. Lord wants you to know. Mungu anataka ujue that when his divine grace is at work in your life. Kama wakati rehema yake akitawi inafanya kazi maishani. He in your life. Ataachilia maishani mwako. A supernatural strength. Nguvu za kiungo. A supernatural covering. Na hata kulindwa kwa kitawa. That you will become untouchable. Na utakuwa hauguziki. Nothing will harm your life. Hakuna kitakachoharibu maisha yako. Nothing will come against you. Hakuna kitakachokuja kinyume na wewe. The devil meant for evil. Ambacho shetani amepanga maovu. It will be your ladder. Itakuwa ni ngazi yako. For elevation. Kupanda juu. For lifting. Kuinuliwa. For promotion. Kupandishwa cheo. Because the overflow of the grace of God. Kwa sababu rehema za Mungu zilizo nyingi. Is alive in your life. Zinafanya kazi maishani mwako. The masses of God. Rehema za Mungu. We will release. Zitaachilia. The rivers of the grace of God. Bahari za rehema za Mungu. And you will be a recipient. Na utakuwa mpokezi. Of the abundance of the blessings of God. Wa baraka za Mungu kwa ujere. You live a life of testimonies. Maisha maisha iliyojawa na ushuhuda. A life of breakthroughs. Maisha ya upenyo. A breakthrough that you didn't deserve. Upenyo haukuhitaji. A healing that you never knew was coming your way. Uponyaji ambao hata hukujua unakuja kwako. Overflow of the grace of God. Mtiririko kwa wingi wa rehema za Mungu. Release it upon your life. Yatiliwe maishani mwako. The overflow of the grace of God. Mtiririko wa rehema za Mungu. Will give you victory. Itakupa ushindi. Over any tempting situation. Dhidi ya hali yoyote ile inayokujaribu. Overflow the grace of God. Mtiririko wa rehema za Mungu. Will give you victory. Itakupa ushindi. Over any curse upon your life. Juu ya laana yoyote maishani mwako. And the overflow of the grace of God. Mtiririko wa rehema za Mungu. Will keep you standing. Itakuzidisha umesimama. No matter what. Haijalishi hali zipi. No zipi. matter what. Haijalishi hali na magani. You are victorious my brethren. Utasimama mpendwa. No because you deserve it. Sio kwa sababu unahitaji. But because of the grace. Bali ni kwa neema. You will stand my brothers and sisters. Utasimama ndugu na dada. No because you deserve it. Sio kwa sababu unastahili. But because of the overflow of the grace of God. Bali ni kwa sababu ya rehema zilizo nyingi maishani mwako. You are will with the standard. Utasimama. You are family will with the standard. Jamii yako itasimama. Not because you deserve it. Sio kwa sababu inastahili. But because of the grace of God. Bali ni kwa ajili ya rehema za Mungu. I want to stand my brothers and sisters. Naomba tusimame wapendwa. As we pray the prayer of mercy. Tunapoomba ombi la rehema. As we stand in the front of the mercy seat of our God. Tunaposimama mbele ya enzi ya rehema ya Mungu. And activate na kutendeza kazi the mercy of God upon our lives. Rehema za Mungu maishani.